flipped the light on, and I see this creature, and I knew, I knew in my heart, I knew in my mind, in the whole night, like, this isn't a man. And then this thing walks across the road, takes a turn towards us, and then leaps over a guardrail. Went to look forward, and there was a big black thing, is all I can call it. Welcome to Squatch DTV. Exploring the Bigfoot mystery each week with your hosts, veteran researcher, author, and TV personality, the Squatch Detective, Steve Culls. And from the Bigfoot Research Project of Kentucky, Chris Bennett. Sit back and buckle up as we bring you guests from around North America discussing the Bigfoot phenomena, but not without a few laughs, too. Here are your host, Steve and Chris. And good evening, cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch D TV, episode 62. For today's date, April 11th, 2021. I'm your host, your guide, the Squatch Detective Steve Coles, along with my co-host, Mr. Chris Bennett. Hello, Chris. Steve, how's it going, my man? It is going well. Uh, I'm mean, looking forward to you coming down here. I just wish you'd got here a little sooner because the heavy lifting on the cabinet stuff, I could have used some help on that. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. We'll, we might have find some sheet rock to put up or something. Well, you know, my timing is always perfect. <laughs> yeah. Hey, all the work's done. All right. Yeah, show up show up just in time for supper. That, that's it, right. Man. I show up at dinner time. <laughs> Oh. So let's do our roll call as we always do uh, every week here. And hello to B. B, of course, being hey, the first, always the first one in chat. Yeah. Guess who else is in the chat? Amy exactly. Boo. Hello, Amy. Oh, Amy. Hi, Amy. Going to stick Welcome. around for a little bit and talk, see her compadre crystal. Yeah. And we got Brian49. Welcome, Brian. Brian, welcome. Good to see you. Lance from Canada. Hello. Welcome. Lance. Welcome, welcome, hey, welcome. hey, how you doing, guy? And we got Arthur. Arthur, welcome. We got Arthur. a lot of new new folks Good in here. New you. faces. Good to see them. Yeah. Of course, David. Winner. Hi, David. David, how are you? Of course, Mike. How you doing, Mike? Big tack. Come on, Mike. And we got John in the house. John, good to see you, sir. Welcome, Mr. John. Troy's reviews. Hello, Troy. Good to see hey, you. Troy. Good to see you. Of course, our 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 uh, our carrot. One of our characters in the house, uh, Ammon Chris. Hello, Ammon Chris. Welcome, bud. And of course, one of the people who survived the three-hour chat and the two-hour after-show chat, <laughs> Nikki. Hello, Nikki. Nikki, congratulations on your survival. Yes, I was on Squatch, uh, Squatch Talk Radio or Squatch oh, Talk yesterday, oh. and we were on for like oh, three yeah. hours. It just went on and on and on, but well, it was great, great conversation. Time flies sometimes. It does, uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, though. At, at the end of it, we, we ended up having this conversation after the show, and yeah. that lasted for like an hour and a half, two hours. And yeah, well, you know, let's, we do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. We, we end up on, on the – uh, There's tell a you whole other it. show after the show. 
<laughs> Sometimes it's pretty. It's more entertaining than the show itself. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Uh, and of course, we got to say hello to Bob Lemley. Good to see you, Bob. And well, of course, welcome, our good Bob. our good friend Aaron. Aaron is back. Nani is in good the house. See Aaron, my neighbor. Hi, Nani. Hello. Welcome, Nani. Good to see you. We're you okay. Be good, Steve. She'll throw a rock over the fence at you. That's right. And Abe is in the house. Mr. Del Rio, good to see hey, you, sir. Welcome. Glad Jerry to see Hine, you. Jerry, welcome. Terry, hey, Terry. Terry's our one of our frequent hey, flyers, too. Hello, Terry. Welcome. And uh, let's see. Good to see you guys. And I see, I, I see, see an, enigma. an enigma. That's a great name. <laughs> yes, it is. Welcome. 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 That's a good one. Yeah. And of course, uh, we, we lost our place here. It's, uh, and of course, we got Sean. Sean. Sean's in the house. Hey, Sean. Ed's in the house. Hello, Ed. Welcome, Ed. Yeah. And of course, another uh, gentleman I'll, we'll, I'll be seeing this week as well. Ed. Mr. Yeah. Dave. Oh, Sherry's in the house. Hello, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. And a person I'll be seeing next, uh, this coming upcoming week, Mr. Dave Wickham. Hello, David. Welcome, Dave. So I think we've gotten that all done. I, I hope I didn't miss anybody. And, and the thing uh, tends to move as I'm. Yeah, the, the, the chat kind of hops a little bit. It's hard to keep up with. But if we missed anybody, we want to sure welcome everybody. We're, we're glad to have each and every one of you every time. Appreciate it. And you see, I, I never worry about content because our audience always has some great questions. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, they always keep the show going. And hello to John. Good to see you, John. Good to see you, John. Welcome. So, uh, yeah, um, that's the beauty of this show is that you guys kind of control where it goes sometimes, and I love I love that. And, uh, uh-oh, here we are. Walt and Little Walt's in the house. Big Walt, Little Walt. Welcome, guys. Oh, is tonight WrestleMania? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh. Diane's Diane? in the house. Hello, Diane. Welcome. Over there from, from Goosebumps Paranormal. Um, well, if Diane's here, I wonder if Jimmy's here. Oh, you know Jimmy's lurking somewhere. He's probably he's probably using Diane's account. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go on my, my head. Right? <laughs> That's where I, I, I send out all my hate mail. I get on my wife's account, and I send all the hate mail out. And then uh, Steve's mailbox is full on Mother's Day. And, of course, we got a, 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 a Kino, I believe is how oh. you pronounce that. Well, Welcome. good to see you, sir. A Kino? Yeah. Well, if we've mispronounced that, I sure apologize, but that is a very interesting first name. So, anyway, so let's say hi to our guest. Hi, our guys. Guest. <laughs> hey, our guest Crystal. tonight is Crystal, who's usually in the chat, but today she's on the show. So good to see you tonight, Crystal. How's things in the Granite State? Doing great. Thanks for having me. So excited to be here. Well, we always have fun. And like I said, this is like a talk amongst friends. And of course, the you know, the uh, we got the peanut gallery out there, and they're just a bunch of friends too. So we're all good. Um uh, Akio, I just asked, how come your podcast is not on the Overcast app? Hmm, I don't know. We, I will look into that. See if we can't get it onto the Overcast app. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, is that a new? I'm not. That's not familiar with me. Of course, I've not listened to many podcasts in the last little bit. Overcast. Yeah. Overcast. Okay. Well, okay. Well, well, we'll give it a. You know, I'll I'll take yeah. a look into yeah. it tonight. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, uh, it, it could be uh, if it's an audio podcast, uh, then that should be fairly simple. I'll just hook it up with the Anchor FM. Yeah. If it if it's uh, if it's a video, then I'll I'll figure that one out too. So, um, but anyway, so Crystal, I I, I always asked uh, the opening shot is how in the world did you get caught up? First of all, tell us before I do that. Well, introduce yourself. What? What do you do in Bigfoot research? Because you do a lot. So uh, I, I do do a lot. Actually, um, I got my interest in all things cryptid and especially Bigfoot. Um, back in 1978, I had an encounter in upstate New York. So that's actually was my driving force uh, to, to trying to learn as much as I can about Bigfoot and anything paranormal, UFO, anything. I'm fascinated by it because people are seeing things and I need answers to, yeah. see, you know, to know what I saw. So um, 
living up here in New England, though, I didn't realize that there were all these different groups that get together. And, you know, my first conference was I went to the Ohio Bigfoot Conference. I was so excited. I learned about all these different uh, groups on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. So and, and, you know, finding Bigfoot. So um, I love Abe. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, he picks on me all the time. But um, yeah, so that's really what drove me into doing what I do now. Um, and I, I think it was around, I think around 2008, 2009, my daughter actually had an encounter here where we live now. And that was when I first reached out to the BFRO and um, wanted to learn, you know, wanted to share our encounters. And um, when the, uh, the Finding Bigfoot team came here to New Hampshire, um, I saw that they had put a letter, you know, a little article in the newspaper that said, if you've had an encounter, I'm sorry. If you've had an encounter. No, I, I'm sorry. I thought it was Chris's dog. <laughs> I know, that was mine. Chris, what have you been feeding those little dogs? Not me. <laughs> I have a German Shepherd and a Great Pyrenees mix. Oh, so. oh. I have okay. two horses. <laughs> oh, <dogs>. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I shared my daughter's encounter on, uh, we had to email them and they invited us to the Finding Bigfoot uh, town hall meeting. So we went to the town hall meeting and uh, as we were getting ready to leave, the place was vacated. It was a snowstorm. It was after 10 o'clock. It was really, really late. Um, I stopped my daughter and I said, I, I need to go talk to Moneymaker. And she's like, why? Let's go home. And I'm like, no, I, I just need 10 minutes. So I walked back and said, you know, hey, you know, you have no active researchers here in the state of New Hampshire. What do I need to do to become a, a BFRO investigator? And we had an interview and she provided me with a name and number of a person I needed to contact. And next thing you know, I'm a member of the BFRO. I've been with them since 2015. Cool. So. I love talking to people about their encounters and, you know, I try to get out into the woods as much as I can. Unfortunately, I had some medical issues a little while back, which kind of hindered me going out into the woods as much as I'd like, but you know, I'm feeling better and looking forward to the future and you'll be seeing a more, more of me in the woods. So awesome. looking forward to it. So let, let's, let's start with your encounter. Where in upstate New York did you have your encounter? I had my encounter uh, in Oswego, New York. Okay. Very and cool. that was uh, in upstate New York. Um, I don't know if you want me to jump right into it and I can share. Yeah, yeah. Well, us upstaters don't consider that uh, up, <laughs> upstate New York. We consider that western New York. See, okay. Up, well, upstate we're is where, where I am. <laughs> it's pretty up there. Yeah, it's true, but it's west. But <laughs> western upstate, how's that? <laughs> that that's a better. <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know it, it's like saying that that, you know, Tack lives in, in upstate New York. Yeah, well, I mean, what is upstate New York? Anything that's not New York City? I mean, I, I get really burned when people in Middletown say, "Oh, we're from upstate New York." No, no, I'm I'm a hundred and I'm a hundred less than one hundred and fifty miles from Montreal. I'm upstate. So, well, how far was a is a Swego from where you are now? Oh, uh, about one hundred and fifty miles. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, New York's big. We went up there to go visit, and I'm like, okay, we got to get to exit. Buffalo is like Oops. 80 miles away. Glad we're not going there. And then we just kept going. <laughs> I mean, Chris going, called it Whoop State. <laughs> going. <laughs> but um, yeah, so my encounter, I fidget a lot when I tell it. So I'm sorry if I fidget. No, a no, lot. no, that's okay. Um, so we had come home one night. Um, it was October. It was, it was actually my sister and I, I have a twin and our birthday was that next morning. So we had come home, uh, our trailer, there were three trailers in the, in that, in that little area. So ours was the closest to the woods. And, um, we came home and as we were getting ready to walk into the house, my mom had noticed that the back door had practically been ripped off the hinges. So she rushed us back to the car mm -hmm. and she called the sheriff's office and the sheriff came and and they determined that nothing was stolen. Um, so huh. <laughs> my mom, I don't know how she jimmy rigged it. I've, I've always wanted to ask her that, you know, like how did you close that door that night? But my twin and I, our bedroom was directly across from that busted door. Mm. So yeah. 
I was on the top bunk. She's on the bottom bunk. And um, my mom had left that hall light on for like a night light. So right, um, right. I woke up to my sister calling my name, you know, Crystal, Crystal. Yeah. And I sat up and there was this huge hairy thing just backlit, you know, and standing in our doorway of our room. Oh, and oh. Um, oh, dear. I was too terrified to climb down the front of the bed. So I squeezed myself between the wall and the bed to get down to her bunk. And yeah, yeah. Uh, we just huddled. I, I don't remember us ever making a noise or screaming, but um, then it started um, walking in. And that's when I always say it gets a little weird from here because as soon as it walked in, um, my twin and I don't remember anything. Everything went black. So the next, I guess, morning, we were still huddled in that bottom bed and we got up and walked down the hall into the living room and there's this big bay window in the back, overlooking the backyard. Yeah, and yeah. Um, we looked out this window and we made eye contact with this creature. It stood up from behind this old car that was in the backyard just turned around and walked into the woods. So we said, you know, I don't, you know, it's been so long ago. I don't remember like all the, everything that happened. Right. But I remember telling my mom and she had shared with us that she had an encounter in those same exact woods when she was a little girl. Wow. So she had an encounter and saw this thing. It was, she felt like she was being watched and she was building a snowman oh. and, um, this thing just stood up out of the snowbank, turned around and took off into the woods with, you know, my gra my grandfather's dog chasing after it. So the dog did come back. I, I know a lot of people ask that. Yes, the dog did come back. And it now, was now what, what year was your encounter? Mine was in 78. Okay. And your mom's was approximately what? Uh, 20, 30 years of, of, of prior to that. Not even that long. My mom was a baby when she had us. So, okay. You know, um, I don't know exactly how old she was. But probably in the 60s. Probably yeah. couldn't have been. Yeah, it was okay. definitely in the 60s. Awesome. So, but uh, yeah, so that was that was our encounter. You know, I've been toying with the idea for 100 years. That's really not an exaggeration. Yeah. <laughs> to do uh, hypno, you know, I want to do hypno regression to see if I can remember what its face looked like. Because everybody tells me, you know, what does it look like? What did it look like? I can't tell you. And you were like how all old I can then? remember are its eyes. And so you were and you were how old uh, back we then? Just, it was our sixth birthday. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You, yeah that's kind of yeah. hard to remember all the. You know, uh, there's probably going to be a a good chance that that was just like that's going to be blocked out <laughs> yeah. because no, that I, had to be traumatic for a six year old. Had to be. Well, I'd, I'd like to know what happened from that time span of it walking in and then everything going black. Wow. So you did. So oh, neither sorry. one of us, neither one of us can remember anything that happened from the point of it walking in until the next morning. Yep. Yeah. And that's uh, very common with, you know, trauma. You know, uh, I, I've talked about that a lot of times, you know, when, when somebody has that such a traumatic experience being that young, your yeah. mind as a self-defense kind of gives you selective amnesia on certain things. Yeah. And uh, that that's a prime example of one there. Wow. So I'm hoping that the hypno, I did finally find somebody. Um, I, I had listened to Todd Nee speak and he had mentioned that he had done hypno regression and he mentioned who his, who had done his uh, session with him. And I reached out to him immediately after the podcast that I had listened to him on and the gentleman agreed to do my, you know, to do my session. So hopefully within the next couple of months I can have this done yeah, and nice. I try to remember facial so, features so we got a comment in the uh chat from uh he's been here the last couple of weeks uh welcome uh brian and chewy go hiking uh uh he said hey crystal I had an encounter in glen new hampshire in 2003 ran its hand across my tent and let out a guttural growl uh, growl grunt that shook my insides not loud but deep extremely deep that i couldn't move uh, perhaps maybe a touch of infrasound in there too I actually, one of the cases I, I handled here in New Hampshire was uh, a buffalo farmer who had some, um, you know, when a buffalo dies, all he would do is drag it across the river into the field and let nature take its course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, 
he was a smoker. So he went out onto his deck and was um, listening to the coyotes having a field day on this carcass. Yeah. And um, all of a sudden this roar came up from alongside the stream on its way towards that kill site or the, you know, where it was. Right. And uh, this thing let out a roar so loud. He felt it reverberate in his chest and just scared the living bejeebies out of him. But I wish, I wish he had seen it or, but he said the coyotes like scattered. So and, and I, I'm that, curious mm -hmm. to know. I, I believe he definitely had an encounter. Very, know, very common feet. too, that when people hear it scream, it, they feel it in the chest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm hoping one day to ha have that sensation. No. <laughs> And Sam is very happy he's here live today and not the next day. <laughs> Hello, Sam. Um, Good to see you, Sam. Welcome. Glad so, to have you. So, wow, that's incredible. Um, I, I mean, do, do you recall any anything afterwards? I mean, like how you felt the next day or, I mean, he must have shook you guys up pretty much. You guys must have been. I mean, how's your sister taking the whole thing? Took she, how did she, take? she doesn't have anything to do with this. Mm -hmm. I've talked to her about, you know, like, how about we do these sessions together and record it? And then that way we can um, compare what we remember. Mm -hmm. So she does one session, I do one, then do a comparison. And I wanted to film it so we have true reactions. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to have anything to do with that. She doesn't mm -hmm. like to talk about Bigfoot. She doesn't, you know, so... We've had some yeah. other odd encounters that happened to us growing up. Um, uh, one time when we were in high school, we were living up in Littleton, New Hampshire, way up north. And, uh, you know, as kids then, we didn't have internet or phones or whatever. So we right. were we were mm -hmm. always in the woods. So we were, uh, we always built these really elaborate forts covered with ferns, windows, doors. It was, <laughs> it was a blast. But um, one day we were out there gathering ferns for one of our forts and uh, the smell, um, we just, the smell hit us like a wall. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even have to, it was, you know how they say a smell can trigger a memory? That's, yeah. yeah. That's kind of like what it was. Like we didn't even say anything. We just stopped what we were doing, looked at each other and bolted to the house to, to go get my dad because we wanted him to come out to the woods so he could smell so he could right. smell it too. Right. But of course, by the time we, you know, we're like, you got to come out, you got to come out. And I'm, we didn't want to say, Hey, there's something out there, but we were still trying to get him out there because, you know, back then too, it was something you didn't really talk about. I, we never told anybody about sure. our encounters. We were, right. we were always told, don't say anything, be, you know, just don't say anything. You know, even my aunts and uncles, I talked to her recently about it and she was like, oh yeah, I remember when that happened. We were, we were told not to say anything to anybody. So it was just kind of like a taboo subject and we never really talked about it. Right. So yeah. yeah, the seventies, eighties and nineties were really uh, big foot. Well, the seventies, the, the beginning of the seventies, people were still talking about it. by the end of the seventies, it had become quite a taboo. Yeah. Um, and it, it remained that way. Up until like shows like Finding Bigfoot came out, a lot of people, well, you know, when, if, if anything, my people criticized that show, but it 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 took the the Bigfoot, you know, stigma out of it kind of a bit. Well, when that show came out, you know, I would ever when I was even you know a little kid, anytime I'd even go to the library, the first section I would go to is I'd go to the library and look for books on Bigfoot, yeah, UFOs and ghosts. I wanted to read everything I could about those subjects, you know, obviously specifically Bigfoot. But um, I wanted to learn more and, and it just fascinated me. You know, this, people are seeing this thing. And like I said, I didn't even know any of these groups existed until shows like Finding Bigfoot and Facebook came out. And then I, I do, you know, my very first internet search in like 1995 when I had right. my first chance at the internet was I typed in the words Bigfoot and uh, this forum popped up and, and I shared my encounter on this forum, but then I was so terrified of like any backlash or comments that would be made that I just never turned, you know, never went back out there again. I was terrified. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't believe I just shared that with people. So, but um, then. Um, but it is empowering. Once you do it, it becomes very empowering. Now I feel really good. I still, you see me, I'm like, my hands yeah. are fidgeting. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all. Um, 
when I would share this encounter with, um, very rarely did I ever share it, but I had shared it a couple times with like friends at a sleepover and things like that. And I would always be bawling my eyes out. So now I don't cry anymore, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, what really got me going into this too was living here in New Hampshire. We live in a log cabin. We, have, we do have a stream that runs in the back and, um, we had, I worked from home and I was in my office and I said, you know, my daughter happened to be home that day from school. Um, and I said, Hey, I got to make a phone call. You know, the rules be quiet, no noise. So I shut my office door and I'm on the phone with this customer. And all of a sudden she's beating on the door screaming. So I'm trying to cover the phone up, you know, like, I'm sorry, my daughter's here and I'm trying to be, trying to be quiet, you know, like, so I take a stapler and I throw it at the door, like, stop, stop, you know, <laughs> then I finally tell the guy, I'm sorry, can I call you back? And I hang up the phone. I rip the door open because I'm going to yell at her because you know the rules I'm working. I rip open the door and she grabbed onto me like, like clinging to me. And I was, and she's crying and she's like in hysterics. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what's the matter? And she says, a big hairy man just walked by the window. She didn't know about my encounter. So, and, and that time, you know, mm -hmm. that was true. Or finding Bigfoot. So I'm like, what? I run to the window. We're the only two home. So I'm looking out the window. Was it a bear? It was walking on two legs. It walked by the window and walked into the woods. She mm. could see only from, you know, like this part down to the, down yeah. to its waist and its yeah. arm went by the window as it walked into the woods. So Pretty tall. my mm. ears going like, okay, now, I've seen something. My mom saw something when she was a little girl. Now my daughter's seen something. What are people seeing? I needed to know more. So, and that's kind of why I do what I do now. I've, I love talking to people. I love, um, talk, you know, share people sharing their encounters with me and I'm seeking evidence. I try not to be so, I don't say I'm a skeptic, but I'm really hard on evidence. So as, as you should be. Yep. And people get mad at you when you say, yeah. well, that could be this. And then they're like, you're a negative Nancy, you Debbie Downer, you right. No, I'm just trying to get answers. And if we don't have any proof, then we don't have any, it's not really an answer. Right. Now, do you find it, you know, obviously, and I think you, you, you do find it very difficult as an investigator and a researcher of these things to deal with confirmation bias. I mean, everybody that has this little dot on a picture or, you know, has, you know, something that, that a borderline type of encounter want to believe it's Bigfoot and it's a big downer when <laughs> it is a downer for them, but it's because of their own confirmation bias. I mean, do you feel that that goes on quite a bit? Uh, yeah. I feel really bad when I have to tell somebody, well, you know, one of the one case I can think of was a gentleman um, was out in the woods and he was working on some stuff. So then he decided to do some calls. So as he's doing these calls, he sees some branches moving. And then, of course, everybody is, oh, it was a juvenile. It was a baby. It was this. It was that. Well, nobody saw it. I had to say you didn't see anything, but you were out there calling. You could have called in any number of creatures now who want to see what you are. Or you so, could have scared them too. <laughs> exactly. So I, people were so mad at me when I was, but I'm like, but this gentleman was so nice. He said, thank you so much for being honest with me and giving me, giving me your honest, you know, feedback because I don't know what I saw. And I said, I said, I don't want to be like, no, that's not what you saw, but I'm looking for answers and proof. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So, but I do that when I do uh, paranormal investigating as well. So, you know, I go into every, every place looking for alternatives as to what yeah. something could be versus it's haunted. Yeah. Well, you have to, yeah, so, you, you have to, yeah, um, you know, it never surprises me. Uh, it never ceases to amaze me how many people that have a, their first sighting. And uh, if they're as they're speaking to me about it, they're going to say, so usually they're going to say, you know, I didn't think we had those things. I thought those things were like in the Pacific Northwest up there around Northern California or Washington state or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're around. 
when the New York episode came out, I was just like, I told you, I kept trying to tell my mm. husband, my husband and my daughter, my other daughter are non-believers. So I'm try I try to persuade him, but he doesn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, but he you supports had, me in everything I do, so that's a you good had thing. me interested when uh, you're talking about the the door had been ripped off its hinges. That's that's right down my alley. I've I've, I've had that happen here. I, I wish I, I wish yep. we had pictures. Yep. You know, like when my sorry when my daughter had her encounter here. Of course, I didn't know things to look for. Like I had never researched anything. So, I mean, I had done like little ghost hunts through through cemeteries and things like that. And, yeah. but as far as Bigfoot related, I didn't investigate that. I would do all the reading I could on it, but um, I didn't know to go out and look for tracks. Did I see hair? Did I see, and now, you know, hindsight, I wish I had gone outside. I was going to go outside, but then she's hanging onto the back of my sweater, you know, dragging because right. she didn't want me to go outside. You know, we were the only ones home alone. So um, it was, it was, uh, I wish I could go back and take a look at everything that happened there. Now, oh, there she <laughs> is. <laughs> come on, get down. He's like, come on, give me some loving. <laughs> She's trying to tell me she wants to go outside. Oh, geez. <laughs> so uh, here's a, here's a question. Um, if I, if I didn't lose it. Um, what are some of the, uh, you know, as you started becoming an investigator, you know, I always uh, graciously tell my story of finding my track in 2003 and I didn't have any plaster with me. I was so dang mad at myself. Um, so what are some of the missteps that, that, that new investigators take? I mean, you know, drawing from your own experience. I mean, have you, have you taken any missteps like that? I think, I think all investigators do. Absolutely. So, um, you know, we do our best. I, I actually had found a trackway that I would love to have tried to cast, but you know, there was no real good, it was in moss, uh, along a stream. Yeah. So of course it's, it's made these impressions in the moss, but you know, I did the best I could on the measurements. They were fairly small, about 12 inches, 13 inches or so. So again, I can't say definitively whether that, what that was could have been a person, but, um, it was right after a house smacking incident. So, uh, you know, trying to find a, a way to do tracks, um, and, and to be able to cast that, I'm still looking for that really good castable track. I haven't found one yet. I try, <laughs> but <laughs> well, you, you live in the granite state. <laughs> yeah. So it is hard to find really good tracks. And, and, you know, of course I find moose and deer and, and things like that. Um, but, uh, and unfortunately, I guess one thing that um, is a downfall is when you have your recorder going and all the leaf litter and you're walking Yeah. that, that overpowers everything. Um, I was out on uh, an expedition uh, with the guys from uh, Squatchachusetts yep. and we heard a clear, distinctive whoop, and I had my recorder going. I was so excited, and we could not catch it over the leaf litter noise. It oh, was man. so loud. So we were so bummed that we couldn't, you know, we didn't have that proof that, oh, we caught it because of the leaf litter noise. So, but, but I love what I do. It's, it's so much fun. Guess who is in the house? OT is in the house. OT, welcome. <laughs> and also, uh, we got Mark in the house too. Hey, Mark, good to see and, you. Uh, and Prairie Fires also uh, showed up as well. Prairie, Prairie Fire, Prairie welcome. Fire. Good to see you. So everybody is slowly making their way in. <laughs> OT is usually here early to get a good seat, as he likes to say. Uh, today he's in, the, <laughs> he's in the bleachers today. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, Crystal, one of my favorite things to do would be like go out in the woods and I would find me a nice, comfortable tree and lean back against it mm -hmm. <laughs> and just sit there and listen. I'm a, I'm a yeah. listener, too. I yeah. I have been out with people who, as soon as we've gone out into the woods, they start hooping and hollering and tree knocking. Right. right. Um, everybody does it differently. I'm I'm a quiet person. I like to just sit and listen and see what comes my way. 
Yeah, so, it's, uh, it's peaceful and it's relaxing. And mm-hmm. it, it, I, I kind of tell anybody that wants to find themselves, all they got to do is just go sit in the woods and listen. Yep. <laughs> but I'm not saying anybody who knocks or does any of that is, is wrong. Know. It's not. No. So, oh, if everybody did the same thing, it'd be kind of boring, you know. Right. <laughs> different different things people try and get different results. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. But I see Amy Boo's out here, and and uh, we we Everybody went on an expedition here. in uh, South Carolina together, and that was an amazing trip because we had to hike in with all of our gear and just hike in for miles, and it was. Yeah. It was like uphill into and then into this canyon, and it was it was amazing. We had the best time out there. So, but I would I wouldn't have given that up for the world yep. to just that that whole experience of just backpacking in with everything. It was it was amazing. So uh, I, I also want to and they uh, let's see, uh, Patrick's Uh-oh. in the house too. He sorry I'm late. No new need. Welcome, for Pat. Apologies. We're here. You made it. Oh, OT's killing me over there in the chat with his pro we got tips. Rod is in the house. <laughs> yeah. yeah, OT is pro tip. Has to borrow the bat from the tree knocker and bounce it off their skull. <laughs> um, oh man. Uh, well, you know, and, and Amy think- says Crystal was a beast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was the woodcutter. I had a chainsaw, one of those chainsaw um, blades. For cutting wood right. and you just have to get the friction the friction just right to get it going and yeah it was a great workout and it was a lot of fun <laughs> and uh, i think jay wants to do a new movie called finding crystal oh okay <laughs> if um, we can do the hypnosis session that would be awesome i'd be afraid to be hypnotized stuff will come out of my mouth the way people you know it. it's funny i probably shouldn't say this i had a Many years ago, I had a dental appointment, and they used that sodium pentothal. Uh oh! <laughs> and when I came through, I was crying, and I'm like, "Oh my God, what did I tell these people?" <laughs> Anybody in the office is wake whispering to each other, and they all get quiet when you walk in, like, <laughs> "That's that's her." <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was so afraid when I left there. I was like, I don't think I ever went back to that office again because I was just, yeah. "What did I tell these people?" <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, actually, I can't wait to get into a dentist office, but the problem is, uh, I can't get a a a COVID shot. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is here. I signed up for the checklist and everything, and they're giving them out at the pharmacies. And I called to get an appointment. I'm oh, sorry, our appointment book is full right now. And please try yeah. back next week. My daughter, okay. my daughter, and my husband are going next week. And my other daughter, she's scheduled for um, yeah. next month, and uh, I'm still waiting. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, I wanted everybody. I wanted Steve to get his, okay, because he's up there in New York, and it was really thick up there. But, you know, come on, guys. We had some here in Kentucky, too, you know. <laughs> yep. Well, I got my uh, – I'm getting my second shot on a uh, week from Tuesday. So I already have my first shot. Yeah. So – and no – no side effects other than a sore arm the next day. That was the only, the only complaint I had. Yeah, I want to talk so. to my doctor first before I jump into it. So I'd rather make sure everything's going to be good to go before I do anything. Yep. Then I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm uh, ready for mine. <laughs> what else can I, I tell you? Watch the so, episode of South Park. They were talking about those COVID shots. No, <laughs> oh, I saw that they were going to do that. I didn't. I haven't seen that. I typically it was don't. Pretty watch good. TV, but. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty good. No spoilers. Also. <laughs> Is it worth it though? You got my cheesy poofs. No, pretty anyway, good. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> um. Wow. Uh Let's see. Well, everybody's talking about the pokes they've gotten. Yeah, John's yeah. got his second poke. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Bob Lemley says they killed Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> you bastards. Um Yeah, so so tell me about so yeah, I'll, I'm gonna try to make this easy. Um tell me about the, the, the first investigation you can remember uh as a BFRO investigator. 
Uh, actually, my very first one was that that buffalo farmer, the, okay. the gentleman with the you know with the reverberation in his chest. Um, some of my favorite ones. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I sh I should say, you know, if you look at the BFRO we BFRO website, you'll see that we only have like sixteen public cases, yep. and in reality, I'm. I'm currently working like 30 cases, plus I have like another 100 in my backlog, not including, we, there's like 400 cases, 392 cases here in the state wow. of New Hampshire alone. Hello, but, Edward. But um, people are so, um, they want their privacy up here so that they don't want anybody to know. Like they'll share it with us, a location for us to do our research. Yeah. And they don't want us to make this site public because they don't want trespassers and right. they don't want their neighbors to know. And yeah. so they're very, very quiet here. You know, I've tried, I know maybe for you guys in New York, it's getting a little bit easier, but like here in New Hampshire, people still don't talk about Bigfoot. I, you know, my license plate on my car is Bigfoot and I'm hoping that people will talk to me about Bigfoot. But it's funny if I'm if I'm out and about, um, nobody says anything to me. But if my husband drives my car, they're all like, oh, I got to tell you something. And he's like, no, uh, no, and, and not you know, me. You know what that is? That is, uh, unfortunately, that's just being sexist because they figure, oh, you know, it's uh, the, the, the Bigfoot probably belongs to the male. The male is probably yeah. a Bigfoot researcher. So that's probably why that's going on. So yeah. it drives me crazy because then he'll get into my card and then he's like, oh, I'll, you know, reach out to my wife. She's the one that handles that. I keep cards, in, you know, in the car and um, I never hear back from any of them. Yeah. <laughs> so or I'll hear a, I'll hear a, uh, an encounter third party. Oh, so and so saw this Bigfoot this weekend uh, outside of his house, you know, and I'm like, well, have him call me because I'll be out there tomorrow. Yeah. And but then they just don't want anybody to know. It's just yeah. so, it's so taboo, you know, still I've but, called uh, uh, libraries and things to try to do talks and stuff. I know, um, I know Al you had Alexander Petikoff on recently and hey, he does I, a lot of talks. Let me just jump in here before I forget. Uh, yeah, Edward, Edward Mongi's in the, in the chat, one of our guests in, in the past, great guy over there at Bigfoot yeah. quest radio um, or Bigfoot quest uh, podcast. And uh, I want to congratulate Ed and uh, getting into the New York Film uh, Academy. So right. he is wow, uh, congratulations. Congrats. He's going to be uh, taking classes on direction and production. So you know very that's cool. one of his, that was one of his dreams, and he is off fulfilling his dreams. Congratulations, my friend. Very happy. Congratulations. For you. So I want to just throw a shout out to him real quick. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Why, as soon I, I as just... my kids got old enough, I said I'm doing things for me now. I have teenagers now, so that's why I do, you know, my big footing now, and I do all this stuff that I want to do now. Yeah. Because they're they're older now, yeah. <laughs> so I go on a lot more expeditions and and try to get out more. Um, so I can. It's my dream and my passion. So. But I forgot where I was going before. So. <laughs> I, Which is not hard. I, I don't have a train of thought. I have a train wreck of thought. I often <laughs> say that. Um, so, hang on one second. Hang on. Uh oh. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Maybe we'll if you need to, we'll take a quick uh, we'll take a quick minute or so break. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, sorry, my daughter. I could hear somebody coming down the stairs behind me, and I said, "Please let the dogs out." <laughs> Please, please let the dogs out. <laughs> oh, I better not sing that. YouTube will hit me up for it. Like, oh. Yeah, normally uh, my we call the we have four uh, chihuahua, four Yorkies that belong to my wife. I won't claim any of them; they belong to her. And uh, usually, when I they were in the same room with me, I would have to have treats to bribe them. Otherwise, <laughs> we would have fights and, and all kind of on. Some of the old shows were hilarious. I mean, yep. but uh, just about every show, the, the dogs would come in and, and, you know, demand their treats. Demand. And, and they do. Demand. They demand. Yeah. Demand. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I can, when it, if you're going to take a break, I can share some of the other encounters that people have had in the state that are some of my favorites. Yes. Oh please, certainly. Go ahead. So uh, I, I think we'll we'll uh, we'll take our quick uh, our quick uh, snapple break, 
and uh, we'll be right back in a second. Let everybody reset for a quick second here. Here we go. Let me just. Uh, oh yeah, it would help if I uh, if I actually call the video file up. It would help. <laughs> You know, this is all, you know, I'm working so many different bells and whistles here sometimes. Um, there we are. I got to get caught up with the chat room here. I'm missing out a bunch, I think. We'll be right back. Are you Bigfooters thirsty out there? Well, I suggest to get a delicious, refreshing Snapple. Yes, even the most famous Bigfoot rush to the store to get themselves their favorite beverage, a delicious peach Snapple. No need to be cranky when you can just ask just keep it, your keep loved the one right for a delicious I I beverage. Talk. Got it? You don't get me a Snapple. And don't be in such a hurry. There's plenty at the store. Diet peach snapple. Try delicious peach snapple. Don't no, get me a snapple. Do I think we're being watched? Absolutely. <laughs> is Bigfoot real? Bigfoot is absolutely 100% real. My name is Jason Weaver and I'm a Bigfoot researcher, experiencer. You know, there's believers and there's knowers and I'm a knower. Georgia is very um, active. It's one of, one of the hotbeds in the country. You'll see trees that'll be bent over like this and the top part of the tree will be driven into another tree. That's an example right there. I mean, that's kind of the stuff that they do. Some have seen them uh, as big as 12 foot, allegedly, but the average is usually anywhere from seven to nine foot tall. Sasquatch need plenty of cover, lots of wooded areas, lots of uh, forest areas. They need plenty of fresh water. This is not a subject you can just bring up to anyone. Uh, a lot of people will look at you like your cheese is slipping off your cracker if you, if you talk about such things. This is the buttocks imprint. Uh, I believe the print was left in the snow or the mud. That's a, that's a butt right there for sure. One of my techniques that I use uh, to lure Bigfoot out of hiding is gifting them things. The best tool you can take in that situation is always keep an open mind. Well, what about this? This work? New Realm Hazy Like a Fox IPA. I don't think anybody's ever gifted a craft beer, so fruit's a big uh, integral part of their diet, so uh, a fruity flavor and it's smooth, I think it'd be a great option. So what if we built a bar big enough for Bigfoot? <laughs> I don't think that's ever been tried. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> you guys are crazy. You sat here, the shoulders would probably be right about there. I think it's the perfect size for a Bigfoot. What I'm gonna do is project the sound of this can of beer opening, and the sound will carry for miles into the woods in, in hopes of uh, luring them back here to the bar. Get the scent in the air. Hopefully any motion that comes into our area will catch it on camera. and take a little breather as we move along. So I'm having a little technical difficulty on my side. You guys hearing me? Okay, I hear you. Yeah. All right. I'm unmuted. I think Crystal's still muted, though. I'm unmuted now. Oh, okay. 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 All right, excellent. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the craft beer Bigfoot one <laughs> kind of drug a little bit, and then it speeded up real fast. But the, but the end, the best part, though, was still there. That's good. Well, no, the, uh, the, uh, I, I popped over to YouTube to see if it was streaming normally. Apparently, yeah. that drag is only on our side of it, not okay. on the streaming side okay. of it. Okay, might be. Good, good, good. Well, it should have played good then. 
So yeah, I've, I've actually caught some of her. I don't know what it is. It's something about the processor. It, it, it's very annoying. Yeah. That's been going on a lot. So I'm going to have to make a note to uh, StreamYard about that. Uh, why is it um, um, dragging? So, uh, you know, you've been uh, to several states now uh, doing investigations. Uh, you know, I know you, you've done stuff in Ohio before. Well, I didn't really investigate going to conferences, obviously, okay. you know, the Ohio Bigfoot conference. That was, you know, that was a, a must. You know, Bob Gimlin was there. I had to go meet him. <laughs> and that was the first time I had gone to a conference, actually, was was the first year Bob was there. And uh, it was like the legend. I had to to go and meet him. So I've been pretty fortunate over the years and have been able to do more things with him. I wouldn't say... You know, like, oh, he's my best friend. He calls me. It doesn't that doesn't happen. But um, it was cool when we went to Willow Creek. I did do the 50th. Uh, I went with uh, Henry May, Abe Del Rio, um, Kevin and and um, we and Rick Dariola was there. We had we had a blast and we ended up being able to go to the birthday party, you know, Bob's birthday party. And I got wow. to meet a bunch of people there as well. So. It was, it's like a big family reunion. So it was just always so much fun to go. So, but doing, doing Willow Creek with, with Abe and Kevin and everyone, um, we had such a blast, you know, uh, stories to tell, you know, upon stories, you know, we, we decided to go uh, to the Willow Creek sign and just take some photographs there. And by the, we got to the, the sign, I didn't realize we were going to be doing anything else. And I don't think anybody else had planned on doing anything else either. So, but we ended up driving to the, you know, driving to the uh, film site and then hiking in and, you know, as much as I would do it again, we were so unprepared. We didn't have water. We had no backpack. I mean, we had nothing. We were just like, come on, let's go check it out. So I don't recommend doing that, but I wouldn't give it up again for the world. You know, we got out there and we're driving around and, um, I did not realize how far everything is apart up there. So when we left Willow Creek, I had like half a tank of gas, quarter tank of gas, maybe. If I had known everything was so far, I would have filled up because I was about this close from um, running out of gas. I had to switch cars and jump in with Abe and them and, and drive. Uh, Diane Neese was with us and we just, it was so much fun. I wouldn't give it up again for the world, but it it was it was a hike and not being prepared not wearing the proper gear not proper shoes but we actually did it and i would do it again in a heartbeat <laughs> well was it a pretty good hike from the car crystal to get to the film site it was a good hike you know a lot of uphill downhill across the river you know yeah. and then there's really no set trail so i mean the the guys from the um oh my mind just went blank steven struford's group with Jamie Wayne and, and those guys, they do have the trail. One trail had marked where there is a trail, but as soon as you get back in there to the river, we weren't, we weren't hundred percent sure where to go. Yeah. We just, we had to cross the river yeah. <laughs> and we did, we actually ended up finding the site and we ran into Daniel Perez and uh, he was out there and kind of showed us, showed us around. So it was really cool to, to show us the trees and the stumps that you right. see in the, in the original film the stumps are still there. So you can, those haven't really changed besides rotting a little bit, but right. it was really cool. To, it definitely has changed a lot, but it was, it was so neat to get out there and I can definitely see how a creature could hide in such an environment because everything's so big, right. <laughs> you know, we, I picked up a, um, an oak, an oak leaf and it was like the size of a dinner plate. It was gigantic. So I can see how definitely how things could hide in the Pacific Northwest very easily. <laughs> well, I love that area. It's beautiful. Uh, all the, the mountains and the trees. And oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah, it was uh, October and we were in New uh, in California and I'm like, I don't need to bring a jacket. Yeah. <laughs> it froze my butt off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but it was, it was a lot of fun. We had a really good time. Um, you know, I do do stuff here, looking around here, expedition down in South Carolina with Amy and uh, Melissa Winadare was there, Christy Condi, um, Mike, um, Mike Rich, 
Richburg was there. So yeah. it was, uh, that was a blast. It, right. it was, it was a challenge and it was a good challenge. So, yeah. you know, just being uh, able to think out that's there. That's one of the things I want to do too. Uh, uh, Chris, I want to get out and, uh, go to the Patterson Gimlin film site one of these days, you know, if, if, I, if I make it that long, that's one of the things on the bucket list I'd like bucket to do. List item. Yeah. It <laughs> was a I must. Enjoy it. Yeah. It definitely was, you know, to get out there for the, for the 50th, it was, it was just amazing. Cause we actually went out to the film site on the anniversary yeah. and yeah. we were probably there around the same time that they filmed it, you know, that same time frame, Cause yeah. We were, <laughs> we had, we saw uh, Kip, Kip Mora on the way out when we were hiking in and uh, we said, okay, if we're not at the conference and, you know, soon after it starts, please send help. Because <laughs> we're probably lost. <laughs> yeah. But There's a difference that. between a uh, marked trail and a well-maintained mark trail <laughs> right so yeah i think by the time we got to the conference even though i had to find a place to get gas so luckily i managed to find a, a place um on the reserve it was a yeah. ga one gas station and it happened to still be open thank god so i got gas and so, by the time we got to uh back to the where the conference was we yeah. were exhausted wet because we were wet because we had to cross the river. So we all took our yeah. shoes off. But then, of course, you know, your pant legs get right. wet. Yeah. You don't realize how deep it is. So it it was it was still a blast. I would I do it again in a heartbeat. It wasn't our intention to go out to the film site. But, you know, when you're out there and you're all gung ho and you're all excited. Oh, you're like, yes. Yes. You get going. into the moment. You know, <laughs> nothing's tough. Nothing's too tough. You got to get out there. Exactly. I'll, and then, of uh, course, I'm chasing. I'm trying to drive after Abe Del Rio, mm -hmm. uh, MMBRT. He drives like a madman. So I he had to keep pulling over and wait for me to catch up. I don't know these windy roads, but he yeah. just. It was it was so much fun. I we call our you know I have we have a little group with them called the Fab Five, and we're hoping that someday we can do more traveling. We want to go to up to Canada. Um, we want to go up to uh, Snellgrove Lake. I want to yeah. go there. That's that's a bucket list item. So I you know I want to do a lot more in this yeah. Bigfoot industry. I want to learn as much as I can, and I I want to get the proof that we're seeking. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things I want to do too. I, I want to get out there to the uh, Paris and Gimlin film site, and then I'd like to make the route that they went uh, when they took the film and stuff, and you know, watch my watch and time things. <laughs> uh, I love doing you know in investigations all, but also I would like to be there for uh, just the the knowledge of knowing you know, hey, this is the Paris and Gimlin film site, dude. This is where it took place. Uh, you know, uh, 50 some years ago, 50, uh, what, what are you, 53, 54 now, something like that. Something like 53, that. Yeah. 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 53 maybe. Wow. So, but yeah, we had, we did, we had such a blast and I'm, I'd like to eventually be able to do a lot more on the West coast. It seems like there's a lot more on the West coast than there is on the East coast. As far as Bigfoot, um, I know Lauren Coleman now is doing uh, his um, international cryptozoology conferences, and those are a lot of fun as well. Um, but I think more and more people are coming around to the idea of Bigfoot, especially nowadays. You know, it's 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 become very popular. So um, yeah, that's the thing. Do you think that the shows like uh, Finding Bigfoot and the other shows have added to the awareness that's going on now? I definitely think so. Yeah, um, yeah. I think a lot more people are aware of it. More people are coming out of the woodwork. Like I, I never would have shared my encounter had yeah. these shows not come out. And then I learned that there were all these communities that existed out there. Right. You know, I probably never really would have said anything. You know, I saw something yeah. unusual and, and that would have been that. And, you know, now that I know that there's all these groups, it's so it's, you do, you feel really good being able to talk to people about, um, your experience and then hearing their encounters and their experiences and then being able to just talk about it. Yeah. And it, it does, it makes you feel really good. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was kind of wondering, Crystal, I had this theory. <laughs> Do you think that the, these creatures uh, enjoy watching human children 
are fascinated by human children. I noticed that, uh, you know, you had your encounter when you were six. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my earliest encounters around here happened when I had my son, who was like, you know, four or five years old at the time with me. And the creature seemed to be fixated on watching him and my wife. And uh, so do you, do you think they're interested in watching human children or fascinated by them? I think so. You know, I know that there's been people going out on expeditions now and playing like children's parties and things like that to try to right. lure them in to try yeah. uh, to really try anything. So, yeah. but um, you know, when I look back at our encounter, my twin and I, um, you know, of course, then I'm thinking it's this big monstrous giant. Yes. Hairy right. thing. But yes. now when I think when I'm using my thought process and my logic, OK, so here's the door frame. Its head was right at the door, you know, at the door frame. I could see the light over its shoulders. Right. So how high is a door frame in a trailer? Seven feet. So is that seven feet? Is that I don't even know. I wish I knew the exact measurements. But then you think about more and more of it. So was this a juvenile that was interested in, in checking us out? Yeah. So I don't think it was an I don't think it was an adult, just due to the size of where its head was on the door frame. You right. know, taking up that door frame with the light coming over its shoulders. Well, so, I'm just gonna be able to humiliate me or shame me and keep my mouth shut. I wish there was a way to load <laughs> okay. these without. I wish there was a way to load these without auto playing. It's annoying. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's probably a setting somewhere, Steve. There's not. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, then there's you probably will click, be. You, you click open and boom. So, uh, yeah, nah, I got to add that to my bitch list of stream yard. <laughs> but you had mentioned Richter earlier, and uh, Richter asked me to uh, to cross promote a little a little trailer he's got going. And actually, it, it has Diane Neese in it as well. Oh, I did see that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let me play that real quick for our audience. And, uh, Oops, hang on. Uh, that's not working. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I think. There. there isn't a man alive that's going to be able to humiliate me or shame me and to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Hold my beer. Uh-oh. So I don't know what's playing, if it stopped or not, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, the lag on this is pretty horrible today. So, Whoop, I'm big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob, Bob's giving me a hard time. Others said they couldn't watch you, Chris. Too much glare with your bald head. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true, Bob. That's why I wear a hat. But you but, know, the thing that happened though, the, you, you, the, the kid was tired, and so he. He climbed up on his mom's back and it looks kind of funny because, you know, my wife, she's a little, she's a small person. Okay. And my son was like basically her size almost at five years old. Okay. And so she's carrying him on her back and he's giggling. They're laughing. And this thing is just focused on them. And I'm like, Hmm, you know, why is he doing that? You know, why, why, you know, well, you don't know what they're thinking. How far away was it from you guys? Oh gosh, maybe 25, 30 feet. Yeah, it's pretty close. How big was it? Oh, that one was a whopper. Uh, my nephew held his hat up to where its face would have been on the side of the tree there, and it was nine feet to the hat. Wow. Nine feet. Yeah. So I'm looking, you know, eight and a half, nine, somewhere around there. You know, it was, it was I, I don't know if anybody's caught it, but every time I take a drink out of my glass, I'm kind of laughing. Mm. Um, this is just a little, not to get off topic, but it's kind of funny. What does it look like I'm drinking here, Chris? Um, I don't know. Is that Diet Peach Snapple? Or it looks like uh, you're drinking the... Uh, water. Right? Just a yeah, cup, okay. cup, glass of water, right? I'm not. Yeah. What is that? I'm drinking Mountain Dew. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, the color of the green I screen. See. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I mean, the first time I picked the glass up, I went like, I'm like, well, yeah, I can see the background like bleeding through on there. Yeah, it looks like uh, looks like water. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty weird. Okay. 
But anyway. Well, like the first shirt I wore for tonight's show, I had to take off. Mm. Because it had this green. I was wearing one of my Chautauqua Lake shirts. Yeah. And the, the one I was wearing was my tie-dye one. You've seen me wear it before I was using the green screen. Yeah. yeah. And I was hollow. <laughs> <laughs> like, so oh, I love that stuff. That's funny. But so what Crystal, what do you think? What's your most important piece of equipment in the field? Myself, my ears. Other than yourself. <laughs> um really my recorder. I bring my recorder with me. That's pretty much my recorder and uh just so you're, myself. You're an and, audio person then. Yeah. I take it. Yeah. Because there's different, there's a lot of different types of researchers. I know some like the audio and they, that's all I do is audio, audio. Um, you know, uh, Norma, who's on my team, she, she uses audio all the time. Um, you know, uh, then there's, there's people uh, like Tack. He likes using, you know, therms or night vision. A lot of times he uses therms. I have a hard time with that, honestly, because it, it messes up my eyes. I get adjusted, you know, you get to, mm -hmm. your, your eyes get used to that darkness and being able to see. I mean, uh, I do have a night vision monocular that I use. If I do hear something, I just don't want to walk up on a skunk. So, right. but I like to just, you know, I have my recorder and I like to listen and, and then my eyes, you know, I'm always looking for footprints or sign or so. That's now, a very good point too, Crystal, because if you look down at a screen in the, at night and you look back up, it messes with your night vision. It's like, oh, wait a minute. You, know, <laughs> it you takes need, a minute you need to, a good point, five minutes to readjust. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good point. But I do, I mean, I think they're really cool. If we're, if we're, you know, in a stationary position, I honestly, unfortunately don't own a um, flare and not, don't have the funds for that yet, <laughs> yeah. but maybe someday I will. But uh, you know, I'm I'm very slowly building building all my equipment. Um, I do not have a parabolic mic yet. I did see somebody ask that. Yeah, but Bo let me let me just put that out in chat. Bob asked, "Hey, Crystal, do you use a parabolic mic on your recorder?" You, uh... Someday I will. I just don't have one yet. <laughs> you know, and and the ones they have, the the cheaper ones they have, they work great. The problem is they're not really built for recording. They have yeah. like this little recorder on it records like ten seconds or twelve seconds, and that's yep. it. So what I I've had to do is uh, I actually splice a splitter into the headphone jack, headphone jack into one, and I and I take a uh, you know a patch cord, and I plug it into my recorder on the other side. So, and then I taped the recorder to the handle. So I have my little recorder there. So there's a real cheap, cheap way of doing that. You can generally pick those parabolic, cheap parabolic dishes up for about, you know, 40 bucks. I was worried about the quality of. of Sound great. Breaking. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you got to be careful with them. Uh, you know, the, the most sensitive part of the whole thing is a dish. It's a plastic dish. Right. Um, but, but in, uh, yep. And uh, Abe is right with me on that. Says, "Yep, aux cord and splitter. Yep, yep. Uh, and, and they work like a charm. The, the I, I, you know, I bought one. On, well, actually, I got one free because I have an Amazon Prime account. So after I bought my thermal, I got a, I, I got like a forty dollar credit. Nice. <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll get the parabolic for nothing. Yeah. Um, the way and, to go. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. And. Uh, <clears throat> that's the nice thing about uh, Bigfoot research. You know, you're welcome to being out of pocket for everything you do. Yes. <laughs> and there is no, uh, there is no backing entity throwing millions of dollars worth of equipment at you. <laughs> if you get anything, yep. it's because you right. bought it yourself. And, and, and just so you know, Bob, <laughs> Bob says those $40 ones reach out just as far as the $1,200 ones. Oh, oh, that's good to know. Yeah. yeah. they. Uh, so I, I, I was going to say, one. I was going to say, I put one on. I put it on and I, I was like, wow, mm. you know, the sound and even the, the headphones that come with it, they were, they were decent. Okay, cool. You know, I can beat them up. I'm not worried about it. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, Ron, who I will be seeing uh, very shortly. Hi, Ron. I'll be, I'll be seeing Ron <laughs> Thursday, Thursday evening uh, at dinner. Um, so, and yeah, Bob's like, you can hear a mosquito fly by. You sure can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't forget. One. 
you know, Steve, I, I, don't forget bring your bring your drone because I want to see if we can mount a Glock on it. <laughs> no, it, it ain't. You no, know, now hold on. Now, Chris, the the drone doesn't weigh hardly anything. <laughs> I did get a drone. I do have a drone, um, but I have not yet used it on an investigation, <laughs> only because I am afraid I'm not proficient with it yet, and I don't want to lose it. <laughs> well, I am very good at crashing them. Just and that's what I'm afraid son. I'll be. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see, you know, the one I have wasn't that expensive either, but I didn't want one that could, you know, for me, it's just about getting up, looking at the terrain real quick, maybe, you know, scouting daytime only, of course. Yeah. Um, and the beautiful thing is mine has an auto launch, so it'll launch up to five feet and then I fly it the way I want to. And then when I want it to come back, I just hit the button and it comes back to where I am. And then I hit the land button and it lands right in front of me. Well, that's probably what I need. I need one that's got like an auto launch because I went up about a, <laughs> a foot and a half and it just flipped over and bang, you know, that was it. Well, you also have to worry about wind because uh, yeah. wind will, will knock them. I mean, you can bring it up real straight and also in a gust of wind, go, they don't yeah. weigh more than a pound, you know, because right. you got to have that lift. Well, that's um, why we need to put the Glock on there. That makes it heavier. <laughs> then it won't. <laughs> yeah, you see the thing all. <laughs> we might make the news here in Kentucky, Steve. <laughs> so is that what you guys are doing on expedition when you get down there? Well, Chris is not going to be on the expedition, but we're we're going out playing um, uh, a couple of days ahead, a couple yeah. of days ahead of time, it, and uh, into a different it, different area where the expedition is being held. At, it had so. been my plan to get my COVID shot and have about a week and a half worth of COVID protection on me before i go into areas where it's crowded with people yeah well, it's not going to be that crowded chris but, uh, yeah well yeah that's like that but that thing you know when you get to be old and frail like me when <laughs> you get that covid crap it's going to be over with for me for sure so i'm still kind of paranoid about it yeah i don't know if you can see it Oh, uh, it's not very good on the camera. Oh, oh you're mapping it out. Yep. Yeah, oh, this yeah. is my uh, this is my work in progress. I've been trying to plot every sighting that comes in, whether it's a class A or a class B on here, and just trying to see if there's any grouping patterns. But um, you know the the thing, you know, when I first started plotting it, I was under the assumption that there was going to be a lot more uh, up north. In right. New Hampshire, that's really where the, the national forests are and things like that. But uh, then it hit me because there's more in the southern region. That's where the people are. So the, mm. it's, you know, where the where the people are to have the encounters where you're, you know, where you're going to get your reports from. So. Right. So but I tell people they're all over the state there, you know, no. and when I, I used to tell people they were in New York, people would laugh at me and I'd say, no, I'm telling you, I saw it and I know it's in New York. Right. So, and now it's, it's, I just love that more and more people are coming out and sharing their encounters. Um, so we can just try to learn more. Now, if you look up on the screen, this is my work in progress. I, I have uh, U.S. geological maps uh, of, you know, the areas I actively research and I dotted them. But what I've done is I've started converting them into KMI files or a KML file where now they're all plotted on Google Earth Professional. I have so, Google Earth too, and I've done the so, same thing. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. So I can zoom right in to a particular encounter where it was. Yep. And well, it, I had people get upset at me. I guess I'm not really upset at me over the map because the map is kind of vague. It just gives you a general yeah. idea. Like I do have them plotted on my Google Earth, mm -hmm. an exact location, and I you know, I put everything on there and that's really for my, for me only because so many people, you know, here in this state do not want their information shared. Yeah. 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 Extremely private here. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is my book of cases. You know, it's, it's full of, yeah. um, of, you know, this is, these are spreadsheets that right. are files, you know, cases that I'm working on. And, um, Right. And it just kills me when you look at the website and there's only 16 and you're like, yeah. no, really, we are very active here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the, and the cases that I, I have on the, on the, the map are not 
at private residences. They're all in, in, like in general public areas um, or not people's actual homes. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're off, uh, you know, different ways. And, and you can see the, the, what do I call the smattering of the pattern? Yeah. You know, and anybody that's mentioned by name, they've been on public record. And as you can see, uh, like I said, it, it's still a work in progress, but that's just, you know, a lot of the ones I've investigated and, uh, and then you go into my pretty yeah. interesting. That's like, you could already map out a travel corridor on what you got right there, Steve. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's, but I'll tell you what, Crystal, I know how private people can, or they want to be secretive about this stuff. Yeah. Because a lot of them, even you know, people that I've known for years would not say anything about it. And then one day they'll say, Chris, you, you investigate that Bigfoot stuff, don't you? Yeah. He said, well, man, about 12 years ago, I had some of the weird thing happen to me. I, I want to tell you about it. And then, you know, okay, yeah, that would have been nice to know 12 years ago. But uh, go <laughs> ahead. You know. And they still, you know, don't tell, don't mention my name, um, you know, don't. Don't want anybody going over where it's at. Don't want a bunch of people running in and out over there, you know, still to this day. So, yeah, that's what I run into, too. It's like a lot of I get I get reports, but I'm waiting for like one that happened yesterday. You're right. So I can yeah. get out there, you know, and then if I yeah. do hear about a case that happened, oh, he just had it happen last weekend. Right. They're, they're so afraid of me going. They just don't want their neighbors to even know here. I, yeah. There was a really good one. Um, the gentleman had his windows open at night and heard uh, a strange noise outside his window. And he thought, oh, did I leave the dog outside? You know, so he right. went downstairs to go see if his dog was outside and the dog was in its crate. And he was like, okay, yeah. well, that was weird. Yeah. What was that noise I just heard? Yeah. So he flips on the back leg and opens the sliding door and walks out onto the deck. And all of a sudden this commotion, you know, erupts, all these trees start shaking and going crazy right. and all this noise. And of course this freaks him out. So he runs in the house and grabs his, his shotgun and his wife is like trying to look out the window, like what's out there, what's out there. And um, so he, he goes to slam the door and he turns the light off. And he said, as he was doing that, he could hear like he was being charged. Like this thing was dump, 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 running up towards the, uh, the deck. So he freaked out and just slammed the door. And he said he could just feel like this thing was staring at him through the door and it terrified him. So of course my reaction is like, well, did you turn the light back on? And he was like, no, I was terrified. Oh, yeah. I'm like, did you see anything? Um, but then he said he ended up spending the rest of the night pacing the house with that rifle because he felt like these things were going to come right through the door because they were just so loud out there. And my thought process on that was, you know, maybe it was a juvenile or they had a compost pile in their backyard wow. and maybe they were a group got separated and there maybe there was yeah. a juvenile or something that made a noise here and then the trees were just going crazy as a distraction in front of him to get him to look that way and not over you know to the other side yeah. but uh some of his trees were trampled you know shrubs and things were trampled and um i i tried getting out there a couple times and then he was actually an officer and I said, well, did, you know, he was so terrified. I said, did you call the police? And he's like, I work with these people. I don't want them to know what I'm <laughs> So, um, and then, uh, we just never got out to his location. Um, just because he just was so afraid of what his neighbors and what his friends and colleagues would think at the, at the police department. Right. So, but yeah. that was one of my favorite, you know, that's one of my other favorite ones. Um, had a gentleman here. I wasn't the lead on the case. Um, I, I actually, um, Jeff Shepard out of Massachusetts contacted me and said, Hey, did you see this report that you got in? Uh, he's right over the border. I kind of call him my mentor because if I have any questions or need anything, usually like him or Dave McCullough, um, will come and help me out. So, uh, I don't ever like to go to a location alone and I'm kind of the only active one right now here in New Hampshire. So I'm trying to handle handle all the cases. So 
but um you know we're volunteers so we do the best we can right and if if i do have an open case or you're still waiting if anybody out there is waiting on me to get in touch with them for a new hampshire you know incident please be patient i'm trying to work my way down <laughs> i'll get to you eventually i promise <laughs> But a lot of the, you know, a lot of those are older cases. But if I had one that came in and said, hey, I just saw something, you know, in my backyard last week, rest assured you're at the top of the list and I'll be at your house tomorrow. So, um, <laughs> but um, I'll, yeah, like a lot of the cases you had mentioned, you know, about 12 years ago, I saw something. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, ah, why didn't you call me, you know, then? Right. <laughs> but, um, uh, another interesting case, like I said, Jeff Shepard would ask me, he's like, Hey, do you mind if I take this one? And I was like, no, that's fine. Yeah. You know, I got so much in my, on my backlog right now, my plate that I'm working on, that would be great. And then he ended up calling me and said, Hey, this one's really interesting. And it's the next town over for me. So we ended up going out to this gentleman's, um, site together and he, what happened was he owns this big property. It was a quarry. And um, he was out checking the property and there was these where the old equipment used to run were these big giant ruts. So yeah. where the, you know, where the tires used to go. Yeah. And as he was walking along one of the ruts, it was getting dusk and kind of dark. Um, he ended up tripping over a root and landing in one of the other ruts. And as he landed, he landed on top of something. And this thing stood up and threw him back and he landed like, 12 feet behind him oh. and hmm. this thing stood up, looked at him. He looked at it. He jumped up, you know, it was already jumped up and it took off that way and he took off the other way. And, uh -huh. and it wasn't until he got to his car that he realized he had this handful of hair, huge clump of hair. And, um, he put it in a, in an envelope. So, you know, it, I know people get mad at me. They're like, you still have a, D you know, you have a, a possible sample that you haven't had tested. I haven't been able to find anybody who can test the hair and do the DNA sample for me here in the state of New Hampshire. I have contacted, I recently just contacted the university to see if they could help me out with it. But they're like, oh, with COVID, we'll get back to you when the session starts. And, mm. and you know, unfortunately I'm still waiting or I don't get any responses back from people. Or, so, so Crystal, how, how much hair do you have? I actually only have a very small sample that I kept for myself. It wasn't my case, but, right. but because, you know, I feel very confident with this gentleman and his encounter that I would, because, I was willing I to can, pay for it myself. What, <laughs> what I can do is I can actually, if you want to send me a single hair, I can buckle swab it. It looks like there's blood on it too. So, and I have luminol. <laughs> That would so be awesome. I, I can buckle swab it. I, I can put it in a tube. I can mail it back to you. That uh, would be awesome. And that way you'll actually have a, a you know, an actual buckle swab. And it won't destroy the hair sample. Well. I just, all you do is you you, you uh, wet it down with a little bit of saline. And, and then, then you, and just swab it. Okay. You know, very lightly and just swab it. Okay. Uh, well, and if, if I tripped in the dark and fell on top of a Bigfoot and grabbed a handful of hair on the way up, I guarantee you it would probably be contaminated. Unfortunately, because, yeah, because he did. He had a, it was in his hand. Well, with, with, with mine, I'm certain there would be a, a urine sample on there as well because that has got to be the most frightening thing <laughs> that could ever happen to anyone, fall on top of a Bigfoot. Yeah. And it threw him back. He actually, when we went out to meet with him, he was still hobbling because he ended, he did hurt his ankle. Right. So, and, um, we, you know, unfortunately we couldn't find any, he couldn't find the exact location because he said he just boogied it back. I can, you know, I back can imagine. Yeah. Car. I could see so that. We went out there and we walked around, we spent an entire day out there looking for any sign or anything. Right. Um, but he could not pinpoint the exact location, but, he was so sincere. I did truly believe that he had a frightening encounter. Yeah. So, and uh, I did reach out to him recently and asked, you know, emailed him and asked if I could possibly go back and look around again um, just to take a look. And, um, but unfortunately he's down, he, he travels. So he's right. in his, he's in his winter home right now. So 
I'm hoping that when he gets back, he'll give us the okay to, to head back over there and uh, explore. Cause that would be, that would be awesome. That, that was, that was one, of, another one of my favorite ones. And I'm, you know, right. it's funny cause I kick myself like, Oh, why did I give this case up to somebody else? But that's okay. We we all work together. So <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. See, this is one of my, my new projects for this year is um, I carry a DNA collection kit with me. Um, you know, and I use sterile buckle swabs and, uh, you know, we put it in the tube when it's done and then we can send it off to whoever we need to send it off to. Uh, that's part one of the project. Part two of the project is, you know, the blood, blood identification. I carry luminol. Oh, that's I, cool. And, um, I have a nice big, uh, oh, black light to, uh, and then part three of it is. How many times do we hear about, you know, a creature putting its hand on a vehicle or uh, the glass of a trailer or something like that? Well, yeah. part three is, you know, fingerprint powder, fingerprint brush, lift tape, oh. and having the, the uh, yep, identification. My fingerprint kit. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah, yeah oh, actually, man. it's funny because I, I did go out with Alexander Petikoff once, um, and we went out with um, with Mike. I can't remember his last name, unfortunately, at the top of my head. The Shaman of the White Mountains is one of uh, Alexander's uh, documentaries. And I had gone out hit with him, and we, we uh, did some hiking. And, of course, I had this brand-new pack, and I'm like, I'm going to put all my gear in this pack. And I think I had, like, my fingerprint kit. I had casting powder. I had everything. That bag was so freaking heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I paid the price after that one, especially I was yeah. sick when I went and I was like, why did I carry all this equipment? But then it's like, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Yep. Yeah. So you gotta, you do want to make sure you have your equipment. You know, I do have like, tw I have a kit that has like tweezers, gloves, plastic, you know, plastic baggies, paper baggies. And there's uh, all this stuff in it. So. And you're absolutely welcome. Uh, Leon, I had, a, I had a blast last night myself. Uh, Leon was part of that show I was on last night, and uh, you can visit his channel over at Bigfoot Canagan um, on YouTube. Just There's the name. You can just search that on YouTube, and that'll pop up his channel. So we'll do a little cross-promotion for him. Yeah, yeah. That, and for the podcast listeners, that would be Bigfoot O-K-A-N-A-G-A-N. Canagan. Oh, Canagan. Yeah. yeah. So check it out. Um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, that we need to step up our game, and, and you're doing it, obviously, <clears throat> is you got to have, you know, I have Ultra Cal. I have, uh, you know, the, the Luminol mixture, which I, I, it's actually a dry powder bottle. So it's a one, it's a one time use bottle. So you got to use it sparingly and, and, it's got to be something. I carry a bottle of distilled water to mix with it. Um, you know, you got you got to carry your forensic stuff with you. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you're going to miss out. And that's really what's going to tip the scale. A lot of times we have these conversations of, you know, what, what it's, what's it going to take? What's it going to take? Why? Well, we have all these things very available to us. 20 years ago, it was impossible to get luminol and, and, you know, getting DNA collection stuff. I mean, DNA was in its infancy 20 years ago when I started this. So. Uh, the backpack is not getting any lighter, Steve. No, it's <laughs> not. <Definitely> not. <laughs> no, it's not. Because then you also have to make sure you carry some water because, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing, well, you know. Uh, the you way, don't no, know if there's going to be stream nearby for you to get right. some water. Well, what, what I do is I, I do carry some flags with me. So if I do come across a track, I flag it, uh, mark it on the GPS, and then I go back and get my plaster. So in my water. Oh, that's a good idea. I yeah. just got this little Garmin that yeah. is a GPS that will tell me exactly where I am. So like I can track it, like I can tag my car. Oh yeah. And then I can leave and go around, and then I can just tell it car, and then it will take me back to where I need to go. So so here's another little secret I have. Here's my GPS right here. <laughs> it's actually a Garmin watch. Oh, has, there you go. <laughs> that has the GPS tracking on it. That's cool. Yeah, this one I just you can just clip right on. So. Yeah, 
when you get out into an area and it's the first time you're going out, I, I could see a real heavy backpack, lots of water, uh, those casting compounds, all that stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Hey, and hey, you're fine. I'm fine with that. The first time I'm going in there, but after I get to know the area, it's like at the truck, I'm looking at my backpack. Do I really need all this? Water? <laughs> Not really. I think I could probably do with one bottle of water would be fine. I used to bring two backpacks, one with all my casting and collection oh. stuff in it. And then, <laughs> then my other one with just like necessities from water for me, right. you know, yeah. but, uh, and that one always wins out on what to carry. Do yeah. I want to bring the plaster or do I want to bring the food? I'll bring the food. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, Abe told me, just work out, Steve. It'll get better. Uh, I wish I wish I could, but I herniated uh, a couple of discs in my, my, my upper back and my neck. And uh, it's still being a little bit of a crank. So I wish I could work out, but it kills. Um Getting better every day, but still, it still kills. How am I felt like a madman. Yeah, yeah, Abe is like yeah. uh, <laughs> the beast. Yeah. What yeah. does he say? Train insane, tr train insane, or remain the same. That's right. Just, I think it's something like that. He says it all the time. <laughs> well, there you wanted to be on the show, so there you Aww. are. <laughs> Got a visit from my big orange cat. Which we thoughtfully named Morris because he looks like the cat on the cat room. Yeah, see, my dogs aren't bothering me anymore because they don't need to go outside. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've been taken care of. They're happy now. But well, uh, I wanted to ask Crystal, and, and I, I apologize, Crystal, because I know this has been like from when you were six years old. But do you remember seeing that night? Was there any eye shine of any type from the creature that was in? in your house with you? You know, it's funny because I can remember eyes. Like I really can yeah. remember eyes, but I can't tell you. Um, it was backlit. Right. That's why I'm, I'm sometimes That's the I'm problem. like, why? Yeah. The uh, light was, was on the back. Okay. Yeah, it was yeah. backlit when I first saw it. Then when we saw it in the mo uh, in the daytime, you know, when it was stood up from behind the, that vehicle. Right. It made eye contact with us, turned around and walked into the woods. And people have asked me, well, what did its nose look like? What did its mouth look like? Honestly, I cannot tell you because oh, I was just yes. so focused on its eyes right. Right. that that's all I saw. So when you saw the eyes, were they like dark? Or were they, you know? They were dark. You know, I, I just remember a really dark color. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was just so focused on those. But, you know, there's been times I have seen, and I'm not saying it was Bigfoot because, again, there I don't have any proof, but I have seen red, red glowing eyes right. across the road in front of us, right. look at us and turn and keep going. And it's like, what the right. hell was that? Right. So, I mean... I didn't, you know, I had, I didn't have the high beams on coming up the hill. It just was the eye, you know, the eyes. And it's like, right. dang it. Yeah. Hindsight. Why didn't I put the high beams on? Why didn't I, you know, what was, that? was it an owl? First thing I did when I got home was Google. What has red eyes? Right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and then it's like, it's mixed, but I've talked to a lot of people who have had encounters where they've seen, uh, eyes and it's not even like eye shine it's glow so it's it's hard to say sometimes people have seen white glowing eyes sometimes orange yeah. glowing eyes i yeah. talked yeah. to a gentleman he had blue like he saw multiple colors he had blue and then there, one was orange so and i would love to learn more about it you know that's yeah. i'm just so fascinated by the subject so I want to learn as much as I can. Got a question in the chat. Do people ask about nose, mouth, ears, et cetera, maybe to get an idea of species or possible species? I I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, it's, I think it's just like people. There's, there's so many different varieties and shapes of people that I think Sasquatch is probably the same way. Sure. Um, you know, the skunk ape down in Florida, they say is kind of, you know, Short, stinky and shorter you know, and yeah. yeah. So it's just, I think it varies also on region. Well, 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 one of the things people, you know, ask, you know, and it's one of these questions, do you think that, 
you know, the Sasquatch is, uh, maybe there's different species like the, the Yaren and the, maybe the Yeti is different than the Sasquatch and it's different than the skunk ape. And then I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's a stretch right now saying that there's one identi unidentified primate roaming the forest of North America and South America and Asia, let alone now saying there's three, you know, <laughs> so it's kind of. It Primates are very dimorphic, so we comes in we come in all sizes, shape, and colors. So, yep. yeah, I love your stop the wounded too. By the way, <laughs> when you came up with that, I started cracking. I'm like, that <laughs> is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I try. Yeah. You know, I try to stay open because I've talked to so many different people who have had so many different types of encounters where they've they've actually had them kind of disappear in front of them. Um, and I'm not saying that they go transparent, but it just like, just kind of vanished. But I can't, I can't say they didn't see what they saw because they obviously saw something. So I have a really good explanation for a lot of that. And I don't Camel know if you've ever, no, I don't know if you've ever, well, part, that's one of them. I mean, you see a deer cross the road, it goes on the other side of the road and you drive by. Yeah, It was there two seconds ago. Now you don't see it. Where is it? But a lot of, now think about your experience when you were six. You had an amnesia, an amnesia episode right after seeing it. Right. What I think is happening is people are, you know, here they are face to face with it, uh, or it's such a traumatic event that they're having a an amnesiatic episode where they're coming out of it and it's gone. So what they're seeing is there it is, and the next thing you know, it's gone. Oh that's, yeah. Uh, that's number one. Number two, in this, uh, I, I got talking with Leon about last night. He proposes that sometimes people want to see Bigfoot and they hallucinate, they see a Bigfoot and then they come out of it and it's gone. Yeah. I think if and you that, go into the woods with the, with the, you know, anticipation, yeah, yeah, the expectation of seeing one, then if you hear a twig crack, you it's know, you're going to think it's a Bigfoot. And sure. people get mad at me when I say, not everything in the woods is Bigfoot. I've had right. so many people get mad at me over that. And it's like, but it's true. Not everything in the woods is Bigfoot just because you hear a twig snap or, you know, unfortunately here in New England, we do have a lot of trees that break. And I'm kind of really up in the air on stick structures. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really buying into all of them either. Uh, 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 Western I have a New York hard Bigfoot, time. Uh, so, but at one point there were many bipedal species, but... Uh, we also have to remember at that time, uh, the world wasn't explored as it is now. Um, so you have this large primate running around, but now we're supposed to saying there's three separate species. I don't think so. I think there's one species and they're just dimorphic. Makes a lot of sense to me why the Sasquatch are taller and lankier in the Northeast. They're more robust in the Pacific Northwest and they're actually smaller in the the tropical areas, such as Florida, the skunk ape, the orang pendek over in uh, Malaysia and Southeast Asia. The Yaren isn't supposedly as robust as the Pacific Northwest Bigfoot. Yeah. Um, Even the Yowie. The Yowie the, is right. really thin and lanky. Right. So I, I think what you're seeing is the same that you see here in in with other primates, uh, the Homo sapien line. If you think about it. You know, look at the size of the of the the folks that come from Ecuador and Bolivia, and uh, and even parts of Mexico. They're not very tall, you know. And that's that tropical, warm, equatorial type of uh, of yeah. uh, environment. Uh, but then you go to like Minnesota, and right. you know, you get all these big, you know, the big dudes. I mean. <clears throat> Look at Brock Lesnar, for God's sakes, came from Minnesota. <laughs> you know, he's huge. He's a beast. Yeah, you get a, <laughs> yeah, a lot of, uh, of, of physical trait variation just between, uh, uh, like, uh, the known species <laughs> of mountain gorilla versus uh, lowland gorillas. You know, a lot of different yeah, exactly. variations yeah. there. Well, they're, they're still gorillas. <laughs> well, yeah, even here we have the moose. The moose here are a heck of a lot. I mean, they're huge. But they're a heck of a lot smaller than the ones in Alaska. Yeah. So Alaska's got monster moose. <laughs> uh, and bears. Yes, I mean, that too. I, I yeah. mean, think about it. The further north you go, I mean, you have the black bears more to the 
to the uh, plains uh, through the northeast of, of, and even, you know, through Washington. But then you go to Montana, a little bit further north, you've got the grizzlies, you know, the big, mm-hmm. the big guys. And then you go to Alaska and you get the Kodiaks, even bigger. And then yep. you go to Alaska, even further north, and the Arctic, and you got the polar bears, which are the biggest. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it does make sense for all animals that, you know, the, the, the colder, I mean, and then food source has a lot to do with it too. I mean, you yeah. think about it, I, I've said this a lot of times, you know, your, your average South Korean is five foot nine. Your average North Korean is five foot seven. That two inch difference is due to nutrition. So again, if there's a, a nutritional uh, lack of nutrition, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to find yourself with, um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of stunted growth. So, you know, I, you know, fair, fair, fair question, but good, good point. Um, uh, just trying to see if there's any, um, OT says Northern times tend to Northern climates tend to produce larger animals. Look at the horses, Northern and colder climates. Exactly. And there's the, the equine, yeah. uh, the equine, uh, the groupings. So we've looked yeah. at ursas, we've looked at equine, we've looked at primate, you know, when, when it comes to homo sapiens, um, and you can see the, the dimorphism. So, and due to, due to, you know, climate. So, and, and then you wonder why, like the saber-toothed tigers went extinct, you know, and they were predominantly in South America. Um, so, yeah, they, um, it's very, uh, very strange indeed. Uh, but you want to look at the the creature spread, you know. I I, I think I've said this before, but um, I used to live in Cohoes, New York, which is about eight miles north of Albany. Well, in 1898, they uncovered a 98 percent complete mastodont skeleton. Wow! And, I mean, there's a mastodon in upstate New York. It looks like an elephant for crying out loud. And they were roaming the Northeast at one point in time. And but it is a good point though, uh, Western. That there was a point that you know Homo sapiens and uh, Neanderthal walked the planet together. Uh, two different Homo sa- uh, two different uh, upright walking po- uh, hominids. That uh, I don't know if there was other ones that walked upright at the same time, where there was three or four of them. But I do know of that particular period where uh, maybe there was a period of time when Neanderthal and maybe uh, Homo erectus were around. And uh, so. Yep. It's pretty cool. Uh, uh, every time they have find out something new about the human species, uh, we learn a whole lot. And a lot of the stuff found out in the last few years, just totally trashed everything that was in the books up till then. Yeah. <laughs> the Denisovans. Um, yes. <laughs> And OT, the answer to that question is no, I haven't seen that. They have a really interesting section about massive, just massive bears reported by the Inuit. Yeah, and then again, you know, you'll you'll have massive size if the food source is wonderful. You know, if you have oh, a lot yeah. of nutrition a lot of nutrition. Um, and, and that's right, uh, Prairie Fire with Bergman's role. Absolutely. We've talked uh, <laughs> yes. that that actually was brought up, you know, last uh, that was brought up last night as well when we were in Squatch Dude. Talk. Our listeners are so smart. You guys are, are like, you know, great they're, scientists. They're Thank you. Sorry. Wonderful. Uh, it made me laugh. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Sean, uh, Sean Gaudet said, Southern New Hampshire, the squats like the acorn and nuts, not so much the berries. And that's the other thing, too, is, is that the you know, one thing I've always said as well is that you don't go to Florida and try to bait a skunk ape with an apple. It's not, you know, they're not used to apples in Florida. Yeah. Conversely, you wouldn't go to New York and try to bait a Sasquatch in orange, yeah. because you know they're not used to it. You they have to you, you have to use the food that they're used to. Um, but there are some sure surefire things like you know raw meats and uh, you know local local vegetation. Um, you know, I bet you put a head of lettuce. Nobody ever thought about how about a head of lettuce, cabbage, you know, cat, uh, Tried cabbage. That's why they get the skunky. That's where they get that smell from. Well, just so you guys know, I I am hoping within the next, I'm five, hoping five minutes next few years <laughs> that I can. Um, I really want to get back up to New York to that location. I still have family that live up there, and I you know if you go out to Google Earth, those three trailers are still there. 
They haven't built anything up out there. It's it's still the same as it used to be. And there's nothing but swamps and apple orchards back there. So mm. my dream, you know, when I was a kid and we would go back and visit, I would be terrified and like I couldn't sleep in the camper. I wouldn't want to be outside at night. You know, I had to sleep on the couch in the living room just because I was not going to be outdoors after dark. <laughs> right. And, you know, I, I, I'm dying to go back out there now and look, and I just want to talk to, you know, knock on doors. Hey, if, if people probably think I'm going to be crazy, but I really want to talk to people up there and maybe even do, I don't know if anybody would show up if it's still kind of taboo up there. Do you know if it's more taboo up that way and do like a town hall type meeting just to get encounters and, uh, then just try to get uh, feedback from people. I, I don't have my pulse on that, that particular area, but it's worth a shot. I bet you people would show up. Um, I would hope so. But if you're ever interested in, in, in uh, obviously if you go out there, let me know. Maybe I'll go out with you. That would be I'll awesome. Go out there with you, you know, and nothing like, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I don't believe, I think, uh, yeah, uh, Oswego, correct? Not a Wego. Oswego. Oswego. Yep. Oswego. Yep. Um, yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, I think, uh, Tack is not very far from there either. He's probably I can uh, I can share with you the uh, I have a, a map with the GPS mm. coordinates exactly where it was, so you can yeah, even cool. pin it on a map and take a look and just see what else is around there. I mean, there is mm. nothing but. Yep. But, yeah, that know, area is pretty. Apple orchards and farms. And but small. if you ever you ever want to tromp around Whitehall, give me a shout. I would love to. That's actually mm. I have not been there yet. Bucket list item. Well, September, September, <laughs> put it on your calendar. September 25th is the Whitehall Sasquatch Calling Festival. Oh, very cool. So, uh, you know, I'll be up there. I'm sure Brian Goslin will be up there. Bill Brand, Paul Bartholomew, probably Frank Ciciemski. Well, the whole gaggle of us will be up there. And uh, I'm emceeing the Sasquatch Calling Festival again for the third year. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Everybody yelling their, their brains out. That's cool. <laughs> they have an adult division and they have the kids division and the adult division scares the hell out of me. <laughs> That's, I can't do a really loud, you know, if I do a call, mine's just a little whoop, you know, I can't do the whole roar. <laughs> my voice, my tone is not there. Yeah. OT's and, uh, got a good plan here. Western New York Bigfoot says also, if you, you want to help up, she, he would go. Oh, the definitely. Yeah. I do want to go up there. I really do. Like I said, and, I still have family up there. And, and if Western New York wants to come east and uh, hit Whitehall, let me know. No, Abe, I cannot show you my <laughs> my rendition of a Bigfoot vocalization. Oh, <laughs> oh, Abe. I'm Why in the I house. It would It would be too loud. I'm very uh, OT, loud. <laughs> OT's killing me over in the chat. OT says, put some cigarettes, which are lit. The first Bigfoot to smoke gets hooked. Then it will do anything for another smoke. Super That's right. Super long-term plan. Hey, primates have a weakness for cigarettes. I'm telling you, they do. It's, this is a fact. I guarantee it. There was a chimpanzee over at Holloman. Uh, okay. Maybe this is wrong, but... Anyway, I would light a cigarette, pitch it over through the cage. You would pick it up and smoke it down to the filter every time, every time. They loved it. They loved it. And uh, and what year was so, that? You can't do that now. <laughs> oh, no. 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 <laughs> Bob says then roll him a blunt. <laughs> which, by the way, which, by the way, is now legal in New York. <laughs> I'm well, they thinking. might they might consider uh, oranges and uh, cabbages and lettuce after that. I don't know, munchies. <laughs> um, no, I was going to say, you know, leave a little meth out for the then, <laughs> then you get a then you get a crack squatch. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! You know, I have to say that when I was out in California, that was the one thing that really freaked me out was um, the tweakers and how. Oh. Um, homeless people that that whole homelessness over there on that coast i'm i live in a log cabin in the middle of nowhere in new hampshire we don't experience that so when i was in california wow. it was it was like san francisco it was quite a culture <laughs> shock yeah so you know when i was i was act i was uh military so 10 days after i graduated uh high school i was at basic training and my first uh tour i was stationed in madrid in torajon 
And um, that was a culture shock as well. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just and, the well, whole different nightlight. You know, they, they come alive at night and that, that whole nightlife, yeah. you know, well, when you were you doing your, your service, disco service. beat earlier, <laughs> that cracked me up. No, but, thank uh, you for your service. Thank yes. you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Crystal. Um, they, uh, yeah, I, well, I, there's nothing like arresting somebody for stealing like a several hundred dollars worth of stuff. And then you're, you're doing a search and you end up pulling out $5,000 worth of heroin. <laughs> oh, no. like, oh, what is all this? <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the, the night just got more complicated. <laughs> more, more paperwork. paperwork. <laughs> um, so yeah, That's very, funny. very interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the it, it is a culture shock when you go to the West coast from the East coast. Well, yeah. that's a one. That's if you ever want to see why Chris lives in the country, just go to a big city. Just pick one. It doesn't I matter. Agree. And then look around. You know, you you watch around. It might be half an hour. You're going to figure out exactly why Chris Bennett lives in the country. Well, you know, I, I look around and I, I say, "Yeah, nice place to visit." All right, it's cool. I've been to the city a few times. All right, cool. Nice place to visit. Go in there, catch a really good meal. Like the last time I was down the city, <laughs> I went to Katz's Deli. Oh. You know, I had a pastrami sandwich that was about that thick. Um, phenomenal. That's true. Know. You can find anything to eat in the city. My husband's company uh, that he works for is out of Scottsdale. And usually every year they fly us down for a Christmas party. Mm. And when we get down to Scottsdale, it's just amazing. It, no matter what time of day or night, you can hit a club, a bar, a restaurant, mm. any place. Just walking <laughs> distance. And you're like at home. Everything yeah. closes at nine o'clock if we're lucky, if not seven o'clock. And uh, we have like one delivery. It's a pizza place, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, Prairie Fire just threw a quick story in the chat. My father threw a smoke to a baboon once. The baboon picked it up from the wrong end. Oh. oh. All hell broke oh. loose. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Well, ba the baboons are not these. Baboons are not higher primates, and they're pretty damn nasty and mean-tempered, so fooey on them. They are. <laughs> Chimpanzees can smoke. Take, take my word for it. They, they can smoke. When <laughs> I Inhale, was... everything. <laughs> throwing car tires in his cage. <laughs> oh. That poor bastard. Oh. When I was stationed in Spain, we took a trip to Benidorm. Uh, for like this little base trip. And as I was walking around Benador, some guy just came up and threw a chimpanzee at me. Oh. And it's chimpanzee was hanging off of me and he's like trying to take pictures and then charging me money because $20 for a photograph after he'd already taken oh. the photo. And I was like, no, no, you can have your monkey back. Yeah. But just the, the, actually the muscle, I couldn't believe how, how yeah. strong it was. Their muscle, their muscle density is, is uh, incredible. Um, uh, they would give Abe a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's working on it though. He's he'll he'll be there soon. He's, he's already looking, there. He's looking to beat up his best watch. <laughs> when when the dude threw the chimpanzee on you, you should have took off running with it. <laughs> uh, where where would I put it? I was stationed. Oh at, well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that would have been cool though. They, that would have been frowned upon at the barracks. Yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. if they would have liked that. <laughs> Well, anyway, we're wrapping up the show. We have six minutes left. So, uh, you can see how well, quick you were it goes. right. Two hours went quick. You're right. You know, always goes by so fast. Yeah. I was um, so worried that I'm like, what are we going to talk about for two hours? But, <laughs> and there it is. See, I told you it never, uh, it never ends. The, the, what, and what we always get a little. For, oh, I'm sorry. Crystal, I just want to know what branch of service were you in? Air Force. Yes. Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> Both my brothers are in the Air Force. As I have well. my Air Force sister tonight. Yes. Thank goodness. You know, honestly, um, I was only 17 when I went in. So my dad had to sign all the paperwork all right. for me to even enlist. Yeah. So that was one thing. He, he wanted me to make sure that I had, you know, a branch where I wasn't in danger. <laughs> <laughs> not saying the Air Force, you're not in danger, but... Uh, <laughs> Being a woman and a young girl, you know, young girl at the time, I was only 17 when I was stationed in, in Madrid. So, um, you know, I was 
a glorified secretary. I, you know, I worked for the generals and I worked, uh, you know, on the flight line uh, wow. in a small wow. detachment. There were like only like three to five of us, depending on the time of year or so. Right. Um, wow. But then uh, during Desert Storm, I did, I worked at headquarters. So I worked with all the classified materials coming in and had to distribute them and things like that. So it was really fun. I did love it. I was, I was mad because my whole unit, my whole unit, all like five of us, five of them got deployed. And because I was the only female, I had to stay, Oh, you have to run the office. But I was at the time I was mad. Like what the heck everybody yeah, else has been yeah. deployed and I got to stay. Cause I'm a girl. I was, I wasn't <laughs> happy, but <laughs> well, you know, storm and Norman was one of my heroes. Love Storm and Norman. Read his autobiography. What a uh, what an interesting life. He grew up in Iran. Wow. His father his father was the ambassador to Iran. That's why he intrinsically understood the mentality of the enemy. Wow. Which was which was really incredible to know. But uh, you know, he passed away several years ago, unfortunately, and uh, he's actually buried uh, in West Point, New York. Oh, okay. So they buried him at West Point. Um. But uh, Nani's taking off. A few people are taking off now. So, uh, any final uh, parting thoughts, Crystal, before we get our business done for the night? Um, wow, I think we kind of covered everything. I know as soon as I get off with you guys, I'm going to be like, oh, dang, I should have said this. And oh, dang, I should have <laughs> told them about that. And oh, I should have said that. And but, as, uh, as my grandfather would say, no postmortems. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always, like I said, I always try to stay open-minded. I talk to everybody about their encounters, re regardless of how crazy it might sound. Um, everybody has their own experiences. You know, like I said, I'm a paranormal investigator too. So, you know, I deal with a lot of unusual things uh, uh, in that realm as well. So and when I, when I love to like me, I I've done paranormal. I've done a lot of paranormal investigations as well we can separate the two phenomena as separate phenomena. And that's well, it's thing. hard because sometimes people will say that they've encountered something in the woods and it was Bigfoot. But my reaction to them is, well, it could have been something else. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other things out yep, there. Absolutely. So it doesn't mean it was a Bigfoot. It could have been something else. So not everything is Bigfoot. I guess that's my and motto. OT loves <laughs> asking this question. Do you believe in a government cover-up on Bigfoot? Uh, uh Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's got to be something. I mean, they obviously know something. How long have they kept aliens quiet? And uh, now they're just coming out with, you know, some some evidence here from the Pentagon that I'm still waiting to get my hands on to, to read. So, but, you know, there's there's all kinds of unusual things out there. And I and I don't see why they wouldn't try to keep something like that hidden. I, I mean, for, sa it. for safety reasons, people are going to be freaked out. You know, you don't yep. want to scare the masses. So <laughs> I, I think they just want to save the almighty dollar. Mm. Yeah. yeah what, want... what would happen to the logging, logging industry? Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. yeah. Anything for that matter, if it was proven to exist. So I don't think it's to the degree as like the UFOs, because that's a, like a national security thing. But I think it's kind of like their their cover up as well. We'll just push it to the side and ignore it. Maybe issue a statement that we don't believe this is real. And yeah, that's really their extent. I don't think they're actively like we need to follow this person or stuff like that. Yeah, but, you know, and like the big natural places, the big national parks stuff where people go for recreation, camping and stuff. I mean, if Bigfoot was proven real, wouldn't they have to put up some sort of disclaimer or warning? You know, yeah. well, maybe. Local area may be inhabited by uh, you know, Sasquatch or something. Do you think that would hinder people from going out you know, camping and things like that's that? That's a good that question. Them? Yeah, I don't know whether it would like keep people away or it, well, draw, some it's going to draw people yeah. there. Wouldn't yeah. keep nuts like us from going out there. Going, Come on, let's go. <laughs> um, yeah, some people's going to be drawn to it, but other people's going to be like, "What? I'm not going out there with a hairy monkey, man." I, I think if I heard something yelling in the woods I, or even ghost hunting, you know, I'm the one that's going to be going and checking it out versus yeah, running yeah. the other direction. Cause I want to yeah. know what I just heard or saw versus, you know, David Winter said there's no second guess. <laughs> David Winter said there's no cougars in Tennessee. I've been in Nashville bars. There's plenty of cougars. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Anyway, on that note, <laughs> Chris is dying on that one. <laughs> oh, Lord. 
Um, no comments, Abe. <laughs> but anywho, um, well, Crystal, thank you for coming on tonight. And Thanks for uh, I appreciate it. I told you it wasn't as bad as you thought it was going to be, was it? It was a lot of fun. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you yeah. so much. I typically oh. don't don't do the live ones because it just makes me so nervous. And I'm like, what if I mess up or what if I say something stupid? <laughs> But I appreciate everything. Thank you. So much if you said something stupid, I'm sure Chris and I would beat you within five minutes of saying something more stupid. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's saying something stupid is my job. And my job. Uh, ah, see, I knew Abe was going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and David, David just turned around and said, hey, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Anyway, Chris, do oh, your thing, brother. Yeah, again, uh, I want to thank our lovely guest, Crystal. Been great having you on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank all of our listeners in the and chat room occupants. You guys are sharp. We appreciate you each and every week to join us, and, and we appreciate it so much. And if this is the first time you're watching us on YouTube or listening to us, please hit the like, subscribe, share button. Uh, it helps us out, gets us found in the search algorithm. You know, we like don't have millions of dollars to promote our show. Okay. So, so help us out. Thanks. Not yet, but soon we're going to be opening the Patreon account. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the, the Patreon account, uh, I'm just going to make this a real quick. Uh, I'm hoping that we're like T minus one month, maybe three weeks to a month away from opening the Patreon account. And uh, there's going to be some exclusive content. We're working on several things right now for the Patreon page, which is going to be. Really super awesome, as my ex boss used to say. So, anyway, um, I just want to thank uh, again, uh, Crystal, for coming on. Uh, I want to uh, take this time and wish everybody a happy and safe, healthy week. Um, we will be back in a couple of weeks. Next week, I'll be on the road coming home from hopefully a very exciting trip to Kentucky and seeing my, my good friend, my best friend in Bigfoot, Mr. Chris Bennett. And uh, we're going to have some fun out there and uh, looking oh, yeah. forward to seeing, you know, Charlie Raymond with the Kentucky Bigfoot Research Organization, David Wickham. Um, and um, who am I forgetting? Oh, yes. Ron Bowles. <laughs> Can't forget Ron. Ron's so, awesome. Yeah. I love Ron. <laughs> so looking forward to, to me. And Ron and I have known each other for years. So it's going to be great actually connecting with him. So anyway, again, everybody have a happy, safe, healthy, healthy week. Want to, uh, you know, wish everybody the best you know hey we're getting through covid we're almost there folks almost there i think another another four or five months will be all is all be behind us so keep the faith god bless and of course keep on squatching we'll catch you all next week thank you You've been watching Squatch DTV. Join us each week, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, for the latest on the Bigfoot mystery. As always, we thank you for being our loyal viewers and encourage all to subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Steve Culls. As always, have a great week. Stay safe. God bless. And keep on squatching.